Today we're going to learn how to create banners inside Bootstrap. And when it comes to banners, we need to make sure we follow the formula that Bootstrap provides in order for it to become responsive when we want to see it on cell phones and tablets. So this is what we have so far since the previous episode where we talked about how to create a navigation inside Bootstrap. Now before we get started on creating banners, there's one short thing I want to fix, which is that right now we do actually have some content inside the body tag and it's actually hiding behind the navigation. So because we made the navigation fixed, so when we do actually scroll, it stays at the top, all the content inside our website jumps up behind it. So we need to fix this first. So inside my website, what we have so far is inside the head tag, we have all the links that we need in order to get bootstrap, including our own style sheet that's down here. And inside the body tags, we have the navigation at the top here. And we have the content inside this class here called container fluid. So what I want to do is I want to wrap container fluid inside another wrapper, which is actually going to be the one that contains all the content. So we can push all the content 50 pixels down to where we don't have the navigation showing anymore. So inside the body tag, I'm going to go ahead and create a section tag. Inside the section tag, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it wraps around the entire content. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down below our div tag, move everything out so it looks nice. And inside the section tag, I'm going to go ahead and create a class. This class, I'm going to go ahead and call main-container. Do bear in mind, this is not a bootstrap class. This is one that I created myself. Because then when I go inside my style sheet and style this container, we can actually push all the content down. So I'm going to go ahead and go at the bottom of the style sheet. I'm going to go ahead and include the class called main-container. And I'm going to go ahead and save a padding-top and set it to 50 pixels because that's the height of our current navigation. So if I save it, refresh the browser, you guys can see that now we can see all the content. So now we can get started on creating our banner. So inside our website, inside the index file, I'm gonna go ahead and go inside my main container. Now inside the main container, I'm gonna go ahead and create this banner. And there's a couple of ways we can do it because we have two types of banners inside Bootstrap. Now the two different types of banners depends on what kind of banner you actually want inside your website. One is being that you just want some kind of text content and the other one being that you want some kind of background image or background color behind the content. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out by creating another container just like the one we have down here, which right now is container fluid, meaning that all the content inside this container goes all the way from the left side of the screen to the right side. Now when it comes to the intro banner, I do not wish for the banner to go all the way from left to right. I want it to have a fixed width inside my website. So right before all the other content of my website, I'm gonna go ahead and create another div box. I'm gonna give this one a class and I'm gonna go ahead and call it container. Just so we don't get all the content going from left to right. Now inside this container, we're gonna create a div box. This div box, we're gonna give a class and we're gonna go ahead and name this class Jumbotron which is the first type, which allow for the content to be inside an image or some kind of background color. So after doing this, we can actually go ahead, insert some content inside this Jumpotron. I could, for example, put in an H1 tag, which is what makes sense because inside the intro banner of any kind of website, you would want to have some kind of H1 tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is a intro header of my site. Then I'm going to go ahead and include a paragraph underneath it, which I'm just going to go ahead and insert some kind of mumble jumble text. So I'm going to go ahead and go inside my browser. I'm going to jump to a website called lipsum.com, which generates some kind of random lorem ipsum text. I'm going to go ahead and copy it like so and paste it inside my paragraph tag. Again, you guys can write whatever you want inside the paragraph tag. I just decided to put some random text in here. So I'm going to save it refresh my browser inside my website. And as you guys can see, now we get this Jumbotron. Now, right now it doesn't look very pretty. And after I showed you guys the other type of header we can create, we're gonna go ahead and take this Jumbotron and style it so it looks nice. And then we're gonna take this website in front of me and we're gonna go ahead and redesign the gallery down here. We're gonna go ahead and change it slightly so it looks nice. Which means that in the future, when I create more bootstrap lessons, we have something that looks kind of nice and doesn't just look like templates. Okay, so the second type we have, if you go back inside the code, is a banner type called page header. So right now we have a jumpotron. We can actually go ahead and say page dash header. And now you guys will notice that it changes from this, you know, banner looking thing 
into some text that doesn't have a box around it. So as you guys can see, this is more of a text-based header. And I think this one is supposed to go all the way from the left side of the screen to the right side. So I think we would have to include a container fluid instead of just a container if you want to use this type because it doesn't look very good when the line down here just kind of stops and starts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go back into the Jumpertron by going back, refreshing, and now we're going to go ahead and style the website. I'm going to start out by creating the styling for the Jumpertron. And then afterwards, if you guys want to follow, we're going to go ahead and restyle some of the stuff we have inside this website here. Okay, so going into our code file here, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my container that has the Jumpertron in it inside another wrapper. So I'm going to go ahead and move it out. And right before the div that has the container class, I'm going to go ahead and create an article. Now, article inside HTML, as you guys remember, basically says that we have some kind of content that belongs together. So we're not talking about an actual article, we're talking about content that belongs together. So this h1 tag down here has a paragraph tag that supports this h1 tag. Okay, so this belongs together. So I'm going to go ahead and take the closing article tag, I'm going to move it right underneath below the closing div tag of the container class. And now we have some kind of article wrapped around it. I'm going to take this article, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a class. Now the purpose behind this is that I want to be able to target all the content inside this Jumbotron. So basically what I'm just doing here is I'm wrapping some kind of container around this section of my website so I can target all the divs and paragraphs and h1 tags that might be inside this class here. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one index dash intro just to give it some kind of name. So now I can actually copy this index dash intro go into my style sheet at the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. And then I can say, well, we have this index dash intro and I want to make it 100% in its width. So it goes all the way from left to right. And again, you could be using the bootstrap container fluid class. But if you do this, it's not going to go all the way to the edge of the screen. There will actually be a slight gap right before you hit the wall of the website. So because I want this just to be a background color, which is like gray, I need to make sure it goes all the way from left to right. So I'm actually going to create a div box that's not part of Bootstrap. And you can do this, you don't have to create Bootstrap elements all the time, as long as you don't mess up the Bootstrap structure. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a width as 100%. I'm going to go ahead and set a background color. We're going to set this one to hashtag F3, F3, F3. So we get a light gray color. I'm going to refresh my website. And as you guys can see, now we get this gray background. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and style the actual Jumpertron. Right now we do actually have a small padding right underneath the Jumpertron banner. So we need to remove that padding by actually styling the Jumpertron itself. And yes, you can actually go in and style the bootstrap elements. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the index intro, paste it underneath my styling, and say that we don't want to target the index intro, but the Jumpertron class that's inside this one. So now I can actually go inside the styling and remove the padding that's at the bottom. So I'm going to say padding and set it to zero pixels. Now what you guys will notice is that the content does actually shift all the way to the left side of this banner. Now you guys can't really see it. Maybe I should actually make this one some kind of color. So let's actually give it a background color just to have something right now for you guys to see. If it was a refresh, you guys can see that now we removed all the paddings around this banner. Now we do also have a margin, so we need to remove that as well. So right now you guys can see the red part is the Jumpertron and anything around it is the actual container or the article that we wrapped it inside of. So I'm actually going to go ahead, go into my code and say other than the padding being zero, I also want the margin being zero. Like so. And refresh the browser. Now you might be asking, why do we still have spacing underneath the text, underneath the Jumpertron when we removed all the margins and paddings. Well, right now, if we were to look at the text, you guys can see that we also have a margin going below the text. So we need to make sure that either we remove that margin or we give the Jumpertron some kind of height to avoid there being some kind of spacing below the text that actually gives us this background color underneath or on top of the Jumpertron, because we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back inside my code. And instead of removing the margin of the text, I'm actually going to go ahead and give the Jumbotron a different padding than the default one we got inside Bootstrap. So right now I set it to zero, but I do actually want to have some kind of spacing. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to have 100 pixels from top and bottom. Then afterwards, I want to give it 60 pixels from left and right. 
meaning that right now the text is going to get pushed out on both sides 60 pixels and it's going to get pushed from the top and bottom 100 pixels. So if I refresh, you guys can see we now get some spacing. So what I want to do here is since I don't have any kind of spacing on top of or below the Jumbotron is I want to insert an image as a background. Now I did actually download an image that I inserted inside my root folder, which is of a person sitting on a computer typing some stuff. And then there's some spacing on the left side of the image for the text. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go inside my styling. And instead of giving my Jumbotron a background color, I'm going to go ahead and give it a background image. I'm going to go ahead and link to the image. Again, if you guys want to download the image, you can go ahead and download it in the description of this video here. I'm going to go ahead and say we have a image folder that has an image called jumbotron.jpg. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this image a background size like so. And we're going to go ahead and set it to cover. So we make sure it covers the entire banner at all times. Afterwards, I'm going to set a background to no repeat because we don't want the background to repeat over and over. If I refresh the browser now, you guys can see that now we get some kind of image. Of course, right now, the text also jumps into part of the image that I don't want it to touch because the text kind of fades away when we have dark colors underneath the text. So what we can do now is we can actually fix this not by creating some kind of padding on the right side of the text, but by using the bootstrap grid system, which is why it's so awesome to use inside websites. So if I go back inside my code and go inside my index file, and if I were to go inside my Jumpatron down here, I can actually go inside the Jumpatron, create a div, which has a class called row. Just like we did with the gallery a few episodes ago, I'm going to go ahead and give it a class as row. And then afterwards, we're going to go ahead and define the columns inside this class. So I'm going to go ahead and say inside this row class here, we're going to go ahead and say we have a div that has a class set to call dash sm dash six, because I want to have two columns inside the Jumbotron, meaning that I can actually split the content into 50, 50%. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one below it like so. I'm going to take all the content I have down here with the text, copy it, delete it, and put it inside the first column. I'm going to go ahead and move it out so it looks nice like so. And if I were to refresh the browser, you guys can see that now it actually jumps to the side. So we can actually get this type of header that responds to the width of the browser. Now we can actually go ahead and make this one slightly bigger because we don't need to cut half. I do actually think we can cut a little bit more. So let's go back inside the code. So instead of six and six, because we have 12 grids inside one row, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have eight, and instead we have four inside the second column. So I'm gonna refresh, and as you guys can see, now it skips over a little bit. So now we have some kind of banner which actually works inside our website. If I were to go inside my inspect element mode and change it to some kind of device, you guys can see that now the header adjusts to the device. I can actually go ahead and scroll down and you guys can see it looks somewhat nice. Now, another thing about the text, because right now, because we're using a Jumpatron, the text automatically adjusts inside our website. So right now, we do get a very tiny header and I would like to change the size of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back inside my style sheet. I'm gonna go inside my Jumpatron, just gonna go ahead and copy the path here, delete all the content inside of it. And say we want to style an H1 tag inside this specific Jumpatron. So I'm going to go inside the styling. Say we have a font dash size. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to 50 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the browser. There we go. And now you guys can see that we changed the sizing of the header. And everything else around it adjusted to it. Meaning that, you know, all the padding and the length of the banner, everything adjusted. So if we were to go ahead and go outside of my developer tool, that it still looks somewhat nice. Again, the, the actual length of the text. Right now, you guys can see we have a single word down here, which might not look very nice inside a website. But we can always change that by either adjusting the size of the text or including or removing some of the text inside our banner. So now that we talked about how to style the banner, I'm going to go ahead and talk about resizing or readjusting the styling for the rest of the website because right now we have three huge images down here and I want to have six across instead of three. I want to center this text down here. So I'm gonna go inside my index file and I'm gonna go and do the same thing as we did to the Jumbotron part 
where we wrapped it inside an article. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this so we can actually target the styling inside the below section, which I'm gonna go ahead and call a gallery. So right before we have the container fluid, I'm gonna go ahead and put the article inside of here. I'm gonna change the class to index gallery. I'm gonna go ahead and close off the article right underneath this div box, like so. Then I'm gonna change the number of images we have inside this article or this gallery section. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have not three, but six images inside this div class down here called row. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it so we have three more images. Then I'm gonna change the number inside our column class so we don't have four all the way across because now we need to divide 12 by six, which is gonna be two, like so. So if I go back inside the website, you guys can see that now we get six images going down here. So now I want to style the text inside my gallery. So I'm gonna go back inside my style sheet and at the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy what we have called index intro. I'm gonna call this one index gallery instead. And then say we want a width as 100% and the background color is going to be white. So instead of saying F3, 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 I'm gonna say FFF, which is the white color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it underneath here and say that inside the index gallery, we have a piece of text, which right now is an H2 tag, which is the one we have here called hello world. And I want to center this text. So I'm gonna say text dash align and say center. Then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this text underneath here and say we also have a paragraph tag inside the index gallery. And I want to do the exact same thing. I want to center it inside the website. So if we go back, you guys can see that now it's centered. So what I can do now is I can actually go ahead and create some spacing on top of the index gallery class we have up here. Because right now, there's not a lot of spacing right before we get to the hello world. So we almost touched the banner up here. I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna go inside my styling of the index gallery and say we have a padding at the top, which should be around 30 pixels. I'm also gonna go ahead and include a padding at the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and say we have 60 pixels. Now you might be asking why I'm giving it these specific numbers. If I go in and refresh, you guys can see that now we get some spacing. If I were to say that we have the body tag of our website, which is the entire body, and give it a specific background color. You guys will see why I gave it this padding. So I'm gonna say we have a background color, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to red, just to give you guys some kind of idea. So when I refresh, you guys can see that when the next content start underneath the gallery, we also want to have some spacing below the images and when the section actually stops. So now you guys can see we created some spacing using the padding. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back inside my styling and say we don't have a red background inside the entire body, but instead we have a F3, F3, F3 color. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it, refresh, and as you guys can see, now we have these sections here. Again, if I were to actually resize this entire thing, by saying we want to view it inside a cell phone, you guys can see we get something that's quite responsive and looks very nice inside a cell phone. Of course, we could actually give these gallery images some kind of title, maybe a description, uh, but it's very easy to do inside Bootstrap. So this is how we create banners inside Bootstrap, and I hope this wasn't too long for you guys. I wanted to show you guys how we could actually style some of the Bootstrap stylings we have inside Bootstrap, so you don't have to stick with the specific styling of Bootstrap. Now remember, when you do actually touch the styling inside Bootstrap, you need to make sure that you're doing stuff that won't actually destroy the responsiveness when you look at this inside other devices. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.